Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the five components of pension expense. So pension expense is obviously an expense and this is something we need to report on the income statement as part of our pension accounting. What are the five components? First, I'm going to list them, tell you how they affect pension expense, whether they increase pension expense or they reduce pension expense. Then I'll explain each one separately. What does it mean? and how does it affect an actuality pension expense starting with something called service cost for the year and service cost will increase pension expense amortization of prior service cost will increase pension expense and including with the amortization any plan amendment plan amendment means plan changes interest on liability is the third component if you remember in the prior session we discussed something called p BO, projected benefit obligation. And we said the obligation is a liability. And remember that our liability is based on the present value of the future cash flow because it's a long term liability. Therefore, any long term liability will have an interest component. So we have to compute the interest component. And when we compute the interest component, it's going to increase our interest, ex our pension expense. Don't worry, we're going to be working with numbers and explaining this a little bit further on the next slide. The fourth component actually is a reduction in our pension expense actual return on plan asset if you remember from the prior session what happened is your employer will contribute money to a pension plan to a pension fund well what's going to happen this pension fund will have stocks will have bonds will have all sorts of an investment now those investments will earn will have an actual return they will have interest dividend royalties so on and so forth so they will earn something well when we have an actual return when we return as a result of this return it's going to reduce our expense for that particular period because a return is the opposite of a uh, the return is opposite of an expense therefore it's going to reduce our interest expense also we're going to have what's called gains and losses and those gain and losses i will discuss a little bit further and obviously gains and losses if we have any gains we're going to have a positive. If we have any losses, it's going to be negative. Now, why do we have gain and losses? Well, we're going to have, we're going to have gains and losses from changes in the obligation itself or changes, large changes in those plan assets. Either or, we'll discuss those later on. But those are the five components. What I'm going to do next, if you don't write them down, write them down. So I'm going to go over each one of them separately. I'm going to explain how they fit all together and how do they affect pension expense. So it's very important, extremely important that you understand the big picture. The reason is because you have five different things all working at the same time. And sometimes you're going to have prior year balances. Sometimes you may not. It's going to affect OCI. So you want to make sure you understand what's what I'm going to be, how I'm going to be explaining this next. So let's take a look at this company that started in 2010. So we have a company that started in 2010. From 2010 till 2025, let's assume today is 2025. In 2025, the company decided to start a pension plan. So when they started, it, it was a small company. They did not have the resources. But after 15 years, now they have the resources. And they decided to start a pension plan. They wanted to compensate their employees when their employees retired. Okay, that's great. If that's what they want to do, that's excellent. Well, now we have 15 years. So all the employees that work for us, let's assume they stayed from 2010 till 2025, we're not going to tell them, look, we're going to start this new pension plan and you don't get anything. Not at all. If they stayed with us, we're gonna we're going to compensate them. Therefore, what we call this is a prior service cost. And let's assume for the sake of this example, we computed our prior service cost based on the number of employees, their ages, how much they're earning, how much they expect to earn into the future, so on and so forth. The actuarial person told us we should be responsible for $15 million. Hold on a second. We just started this plan today, 2025, and immediately immediately we have an expense for the past 15 years and for the sake of simplicity i chose the expense to be the cost the expenditure now don't say it's an expense yet just hold on the cost or the expenditure is 15 million well what are we going to do are we gonna expense 15 million today and the answer is no what we're gonna do for now we're gonna debit oci other comprehensive income so oci stands for other 
comprehensive income and hopefully you know what this is other comprehensive income is a balance sheet account it's an equity account and remember if it's an equity we are reducing our equity we're going to debit oci 15 million and we are going to credit pension liability now we say we are responsible for 15 million however however we are not going to let this 15 million hit the income statement now we're going to park this park this 15 million for now in oci which it reduces our balance sheet obviously it reduces our equity okay it reduces our equity simply put if if you really want to understand it from a an asset liability equity perspective so what happened is our liabilities went up by 15 million if those are the liabilities our equity went down by 15 so that's that's how it's that's how it equals that's how the accountant equation would remain in balance now what's going to happen to this 15 million we will amortize it guess what over the next 15 years i just chose this so i'm going to say we're going to take this 15 million and we're going to amortize it now when we amortize it it's going to go to interest expense when it goes to interest expense it's going to increase interest expense so over the next 15 years every year we'll debit pension expense 1 million we credit oci we 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 get it out of oci for 1 million and this is for the next 15 years now bear in mind just like i said i explained to you prior service cost what could happen sometime is this let's assume in 2028 the company is doing very very well and what we decided to do to to compensate our employees because the company are doing very well we can do plan amendment same thing we're going to increase the the amount that we want to give to our to our employees if that's what we want to do it's treated the same thing as a prior service cost we'll determine the amount first it will we would let it sit in oci and obviously plan amendment usually i mean it could decrease the obligation but usually it does not usually you're not going to penalize your employees for being there but it could could end a problem for example telling you plan and plan amendment and the pbo is reduced what if that's the case it means the pension liability is debited well that's 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 not the norm okay usually you want to compensate your employees if there's any plan amendment it's the same thing as prior service cost so this is the first thing this is one component of interest expense remember this component increases interest expense before we look at the second component i would like to remind you whether you are a student or a cpa candidate and most likely you are studying for something and this is how you end up here on my youtube well guess what i can help you i can help you do better go to farhatlectures.com i have additional resources that's going to help you with your cpa exam it doesn't matter which course you are taking i'll help you along those courses or accounting courses all my courses are organized by chapter so it's very easy to follow my cpa resources are aligned with your becker roger wiley gleam miles so on and so forth i have cma material i also give you access to 1500 previously released ai cpa questions with detailed solution look the reason you are watching is because you need help i can help you have lectures multiple choice true false if you have any doubts please go ahead and connect with me on instagram take a look at my i'm uh, not instagram linkedin recommendation like this recording if you found it you want to make sure other people do found it as well like it share it with other connect with me on instagram facebook twitter reddit and i started a cpa exam support group on group me please join me and other cpa candidate in that group the second component of pension uh, pension expense is something we called service cost for the year and this is going to increase the pension expense what is the service cost for the year what's going to happen is this the employees are going to work in year 2026 2027 2028 so on and so forth so every year they work well we have to factor that additional cost into the future because if they earn one year then they earn more into the future so th the actuarial present value of benefit attributed to that particular year to that particular year so it's that service cost for the year because they work one additional year they qualify for more simply put when they do this we debit pension expense for half a million and credit pension liability for half a million so notice here we went we increased pension expense as we said service cost for the year increases pension expense now for the sake of illustration if we are keeping track of our liability we started with 15 million then we increased it here by 500,000 500k so simply put our liability for the sake of this example we have a liability of 15.5 million 15 million starting and let's assume that's the liability now again any liability will have to accrue interest so what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to 
accrue interest on this liability. What does, what does that mean? It means part of this 15.5 is part of it is interest. So we have to determine how much of it is interest and we use something called the settlement rate. So we're going to take 15.5 million times the settlement rate to find out what is the interest component of the liability. And the interest component will increase our pension expense. This is the third component. The fourth component, if you remember, the fourth component was the actual return on the plan asset. In reason, I put it in a different color because remember, the actual return will reduce pension expense because it's what you are earning on your stocks, bonds that are sitting in that plan asset and it's earning dividend and interest. Well, it's going to reduce it because we are earning. Now, how do we compute actual return on plant asset? Now, remember, we're going to this is the actual return. Later on, we're going to be using the expected return, but you need to know how to compute the actual return. How do we compute the actual return? Well, we're going to take the plan asset ending balance. So let's assume we have, for the sake, I'm going to keep it simple numbers, $5,000 in plan assets. And we're going to compare this to the plant asset at the beginning of the period. Let's assume it's 4,200. Well, if we notice that we started with 4,200, the value of the plant assets, we end up with 5,000. Well, what can we say? We can say that there was a change of 800. Now, is this the increase, the actual return? No, we have to deduct any contribution we made to the plan. Remember, the employer, the company, sends money to this plan. So that could be because they send money. Let's assume the company for that year sent an additional $200. Well, we're going to take the 800 minus 200. Now the net increase 600. We're not done yet. Then we're going to have to deduct any payment made to the employees, not to the employees, to the retirees, the former employees. Any benefit paid are deducted also from the 600, from the 600 now, because it was 800 at the beginning. We deducted 200 for the contribution, now we'll 600. And let's assume for the sake of illustration, we paid 350. So 600 minus 350, if my math is right, it should give me 250, right? Two, five, yeah, 600. So the actual return is 250. So you need to know how to compute the actual return. And oftentimes on the CPA exam, they might give you a problem. Just compute the actual return. Think of it logically. You would look at the change in the plan asset. What did you started with? What did you end up with? Well, it increased by 800. Well, you cannot say this is my return because you contributed some money and you cannot say this is my return unless you deduct the benefit paid because that's paid out paid out. So what's left is 250. This is what's called the actual return. Remember later on, we're going to learn about the expected return. So don't worry. Just, I just want to make sure when you see expected return, remember we have expected and we have actual. The fifth component of the pension expense is gain slash losses. Where do those gain slash losses arise from? They could arise from two different, two different sources. The value of the plan asset. Remember the plan asset, they have an actual return, but sometimes what's going to happen is in some years, the stock market could go up a lot if you have that money in the stocks or the stock market could go down a lot. So there is large and sudden fluctuation. Well, you don't re you don't really want to do so. Uh, you don't really want to account for those large and sudden changes because they change from year to year. So we're going to learn later how to deal with those gains and losses, but they could result from those changes in the plant asset or changes in the PBO, projected benefit obligation. Remember, the actuarial scientist gives us this PBO. So sometime, let's assume suddenly the PBO told us that uh, now people are living longer. Now you have to increase your PBO by $5 million. And that's a large increase. Well, if that's the case, then we have to do something about this, which is a loss in, in our situation. We'll have to know how to deal with that loss. This topic to be discussed later because it's it's worth looking at it. But the point is, sometimes you could have a gain, sometimes you could have losses. And what we're going to do, we're going to kind of smooth them out. You will see how we do it later. But those are the five components of the pension expense. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com, work MCQs and true false and exercises to learn more how to deal with those problem, how to compute pension expense, because we're going to be adding more and more to this topic. We're going to starting with the worksheet and all these components that are going to work together. Study hard. Don't shortchange yourself. Your education is important. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.